Hey Bulls fans, Adam Harry back again with another Bulls unboxing. We are continuing the Horus Heresy Betrayal at Cal coverage. This is actually the final video in our series of the unboxing. Uh, we've already done the unboxing of everything in the box. We've gone through all the different sprues. In this final video, we're going to run through the book. I'm going to go over the cards. We're going to take a look at the dice, just a quick look, and then also the tiles as well. So here's, uh, here's just everything we're gonna cover real fast. So uh, that said, let me go ahead and pause and we'll start with the cards. Here are the four different card uh, decks, for lack of a better term. Basically, you've got the uh, Ultramarine Command deck, the Word Bearers Command deck. You've got Sol Gorex, uh, Garx the Bull, his his damage card deck, which is cool. We'll go over that in a second. And then we just have the, the different uh, cards here for uh, the two heroes, we've got Captain Atheon and Kurtha Sed's cards. When they get wounded, you flip them over. Uh, they have their special rules and stuff like that. Um, and then again, I'll go over the stats here when we go through the book, but just know that you get the cards, quick reference cards. You get uh, the quick reference, this is the bull, how to damage him, how he works. And then the uh, the unit cards for each one. You got Cataphracty, obviously, uh, Legion Terminators for Ultramarines and Legion Terminators for uh, Terminator. Legion Tax Squad Marines and Legion Tax Squads here in the Cataphracty. Terminators. Yes. So that's what these cards are for. And then the Gore, uh, uh, Sor here, the Bull, his card, uh, it's his stats. Um, we've got equip equipment options, damaging, how he works, and then all that good stuff. So let me run through his damage deck real fast while we're looking at it. So his is pretty cool. You roll your dice. Uh, you flip the card to see if you've done any damage to him. It'll show you uh, where you hit, basically. Uh, this is kind of a randomized, you don't get to choose. You uh, you start face down and flip them. So. Anyway, uh, it tells you where you hit. You have to see the armor. Uh, if you be, he, That's how many dice he gets to roll back. And again, we'll get more in the rules, but his armor's, f f for instance, shooting at his heavy weapon arm, armor four, stamina three, if, uh, if he gets damaged, the uh, damage effect happens there. On top of that, uh, there's other stuff. Some of the effects can actually um, affect other card damage cards for him as well. So, for instance, if you do happen to pull the uh, the power core card here, you'll actually, if you destroy this, subtract two armor from the value of each of his other target locations. So, all the other ones become weaker if you take out the core. Shocking how that works, but. Uh, pretty good uh, damage deck. Again, really nice artwork on these. I, I really like the, the cards in general. Uh, I think the layout on them is really nice. It definitely has the same look that the uh, Horus Heresy Big Books have from Forge World. Uh, the color palette's very similar. You can see the kind of the, the red uh, um, bold letters and then the, uh, the, the text is the same as well as that kind of uh, parchment paper look. And then the edges have that red lining too. So just a nice little call here. These are basically special tactical, uh, tactical cards, command cards, but you can use them uh, during the game. They have different effects. Uh, for instance, we'll get Dark Pact real fast. Uh, play when a word bearer's model is removed. It's a casualty before removing the model from the board. So before you pull them, uh, roll a die. If the blank is rolled, the model is removed from the board. Otherwise, it remains where it is. So it's a one in six chance with the blank. Uh, it cannot be chosen again as a target model during the attack if it is the only model remaining in the unit. Any remaining hits in the damage pool are discarded. So basically, it's a super secret save. All of the cards have these nice little, well, all the cards in here have a nice little flavor text too to tell you what's going on. But there's just different effects that happen. So you can see there, uh, there's Rad Grenade, uh, Guided by Portents, uh, things like that. So Foul Desecration, you get the idea. It's all Word Bearers esque stuff. And then Ultramarines, shockingly enough, have Ultramarines themed stuff for their command cards. So as you see here, uh, this one is Precision Strike. For example, this one, uh, play one Ultramarine unit makes a melee attack before rolling the attack dice. If you roll a critical hit, which is I believe a one in six as well, uh, you can trigger the following critical effect instead of instead of the critical effect of a melee weapon unit. This, so basically this overrides it. Critical, critical effect is the first target model is chosen by all strings player instead of the word bearers player, which is a nice little touch. Attacking uh, Sorgarx, so the, uh, the bull, the Ultramarines player, which is the Contemptor Dread, uh, the Ultramarines player chooses a target location instead of drawing a card. So you actually get to pick, I want to attack the core to weaken all the other stuff. So it's pretty cool. Then you got stuff, crack grenades, uh, Prometheum, Pipeline, uh, Swift Vengeance, he goes on. So lots of really cool cards uh, for each player to use. Um, there's the scenario will tell you how to draw the decks for the cards. So 
Uh, that's it for all of those cards uh, with the Thunder Slam. Let's take a quick look at the dice as well. If you guys at home don't uh, mind, we'll go ahead and do the dice and the board. So as you can see here, uh, these are the custom dice for the uh, for the game. Uh, each dice has two shields, which are uh, the round ones there. I'm oh, sorry, those are the hits. So they each have two hits, two basic hits. Uh, two uh, shields, which are the apothecary symbol there, so two of those. Uh, one crit and one critical hit, which still uh, also counts as a hit, and one blank. So you've got a one in six for, whoa. <laughs> you've got a one in six for a blank, a one in six for a crit, uh, two out of, th or a third of a chance of a regular hit, and a third of a chance of an armor save. So uh, basically if you're shooting, uh, if, you, if your weapon has a value of four, you roll four dice. And I'll just pick up four dice here, show you what I'm talking about. You roll four dice, I got absolutely no hits. <laughs> so, let me try it again. Okay, so I got one hit, two hits, three hits, much better, and a shield. So if I was attacking, that would be my four or three hits. The defender, if they say they've got like three dice on shields, uh, you roll those. Okay, so the... Uh, attacker had three hits, the defender had one uh, shield, so you basically just uh, compare the values. So uh, three minus one is two, so basically two hits go through. You compare that to the target's stamina. If it meets or beats, the target is then destroyed or removed from whatever, unless you have an effect. But that's basically it. It's, it's really simple uh, dice mechanics, and uh, I love rolling dice, so I like that a lot. <laughs> So we'll jump right into the boards real quick. Uh, that's just a really quick demo of the dice. Um, for more in-depth rules, read the rule book, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, for the tiles, you can see here, we, we kind of covered these already in the unboxing, but I, I just want to show off. These again are punch tiles. Uh, they do have extra doodads like these barricades here, which um, the line of sight rules on the tiles are kind of interesting. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and punch one of these out real quick and I'll show you uh, here. So. So these can, here's the tiles. You can see uh, each one of them is labeled in the rule book. Uh, like I don't know which one, but for instance, if this one was A1, and the scenario called for A1, B2, and C4, maybe C4 is a bad example. C3, <laughs> then uh, you'd line them up as shown in the diagram in the book, which I'll show you here on one of the missions in a sec. And uh, there you go. So the way the line of sight works in the game is kind of funny. Uh, let's do this one because you can see the, the red lines a little bit better. So. Obviously, these, this is a hex grid. Uh, movement most of the time is one, unless you're running, then you can move two hexes. Uh, you start here and you move two, you go one, two. Uh, shooting is pretty simple. If you are standing, maybe this isn't such a good example board, but you're standing here and you're firing, well, you have a clear line of sight from the center of the hex to the center of the other hex where the target unit is. It's not obscured, it's a regular shot. If you're drawing a line of sight, from say this hex to this hex. You can't draw a clear line from center to center without passing through, So you, but you can still see part of the hex. It would count as obscured. Um, and then obviously you can't fire from this hex through that hex to that hex. So pretty simple for line of sight. Again, we'll go through, I'll show you guys the diagram of the book, it's a little bit better, uh, but that's a quick generalization of how that works. So, but yeah, these tiles are really good. You can see it's a hard, not, not quite cardboard, but it's hardboard. Uh, very nice finish on them, very tough. It's kind of like, a, let's say like the Space Log board game, obviously, or the um, the Assassin board game. Same type of stuff. Really good quality. Uh, gonna last you for a long time, as long as you don't, I don't know, spill a bunch of drinks on them and burn them or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it's a good, solid board all the way around. And again, they all have a, a nice, different look to them. Uh, for those of you who don't know in the fluff, the, the Battle of Calf, this particular fight uh, takes takes uh, uh, takes place underground a lot of times, um, which we'll show. I'll show that off. But this is basically in the under tunnels, which is why uh, this looks kind of like poorly lit area because it is. <laughs> and oh, uh, I want to mention these two. These are the like, command tokens here for each side. Uh, obviously, word bearers, ultramarines. Uh, they have two on this side, and then when you punch them out. So I'll do that real quick. Or just flip it over, I guess. They have one. That's basically like the unit activation. So each each uh, unit uh, on the board starts with one, or starts with two, excuse me, most of the time. 
I'm not gonna do examples for that, but <laughs> most of the time they start with two, uh, two activation, or two, two, uh, two orders basically. Uh, every time you move the unit or do an action, you flip it over uh, so that it show one, one order, and then when they do the last order, you pull the whole token. So pretty simple. Um, again, we'll go, I'll show it in the rules. We've got some game, gameplay demos up already. Uh, I know some other people have done demos, but I think uh, Spiky, Bits, Spiky Bits, Rob over there actually did a, a quick de gameplay demo. So uh, we'll probably put that up, uh, just kind of a recap on Friday, if you want to check that out. So, uh, or go check out his channel for that matter. So anyway, uh, that's it for the board and kind of the, some of those extra bits. And I already talked about the barricades. Barricades are a little weird. Uh, the, the rule was written, um, Maybe I just need more caffeine when I read it. <laughs> but basically, if you're, these are the barricades right here. If you're in the thing with a barricade and somebody's shooting at you, if the line of sight crosses through the barricade, then you get the benefit, which is like two extra defense die. Uh, I don't think it works if you're shoot, like if I'm in there with my barricade and I'm shooting at you because you're not in the same square as the barricade, you don't get the benefit. I think that's how the, the rule is written uh, again. Uh, explaining it, it sound it makes sense in my head. Uh, I have to reread the. I had to read the rule a couple of times just because it was worded kind of funny. So, um, but I think that's how that works. Okay, last but not least, let's take a look at the book. All right, here is the Horus Heresy Betrayal at Calf rule book and source book and fluff book and unit book, whatever you want to call it. It's <laughs> everything you need to know to play the the actual game, uh, the Horus Heresy Betrayal at Calf board game slash introductory to 40k all that fun stuff whatever you want to call it it's really good um i'm not going to show off the instruction manual because i mean it's just the building of the models and since we've got all the pics of the sprues i figured you guys probably wouldn't care about that too much but uh the book itself is really nice it's like 50 pages total if you count the back page uh, which is the reference section which you'll probably use more than the rest of the stuff in the book aside from maybe the missions uh, it's really well done it's High quality magazine print style, so very nice, full color all the way through, beautiful photography. Again, it's the same style as the rest of the Horus Heresy books from Forge World. Uh, it's got the same color palette, um, just quality wise, it's very good. I mean, if this had come out as a hardback, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they charged a lot for it. So, uh, it'd probably have to be more in depth, but <laughs> it's more than just four pages of rules. That's the, that's the plus side. So, we've got, uh, um, a big, nice introduction to what the Horus Heresy is, what's going on all the for the, the, the game itself. It's got a quick little tidbit about the two guys fighting here, uh, the the uh, Captain Atheon and Kurt the Sed, so it's pretty cool. Um, goes over the miniatures, just who, who everybody is, just Legion Veteran. If you've never played 40K or, or seen a Space Marine before, have no idea about the universe, this is a perfect introduction for that. So if you've got a friend that's never played, Boom, check it out. Uh, this is a great intro game. Uh, like I said, the dice mechanics are very simplified versions of the 40K rules because you're only using Marines on Marines. You don't have to get into a three plus plus, but uh, three plus versus four plus, you know, it's very simple. So it's a great intro game. Um, plus the models are cool. So <laughs> again, Legion Vets, Kurt the Said, uh, we've got Cataphract Determinators, uh, Captain Atheon, uh, the bull here, the big Contemptor, which is awesome. So. Uh, goes through all that again the board how it's labeled a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 i guess there was no c3 whatever uh d d1 d2 those are the two sided and it, it, it it's all numbered for your easy reference when you're building stuff reference card again i kind of mentioned this already uh I talked about the armor value that's how many dice you roll uh when you're defending so this legion terminator for example is a five armor uh, stamina is the measure of the model's resilience to harm so when you allocate hits to them if you Again, meet or beat that stamina number. They're, they're die basically, if you meet it, the model is, is basically dead. Uh, any additional hits, you can then roll over to the next uh, model. Well, yeah. Anyway, assault value, that's the uh, uh, how many dice you roll in close combat, obviously. Bulk. So the tiles are actually kind of interesting. Um, every model has a bulk value. Uh, for friendly models, uh, if a attack marine has a bulk value of one, each hex can support up to three bulk worth of guys. So three attack marines, uh, one cataphracty, one marine, or um, the big the big dog himself, Kurtha said, or um, sorry, <laughs> the big dog himself, the bull, not Kurtha said. Kurtha said is just a attack marine, so equivalent bulk wise. 
anyway, uh, you see there, so it, it's really simple. Um, movement wise is you're limited to a number of guys. But whenever it, all friendly models that are in a hex form a unit. So if you got three attack ranges in one, it's one unit. So they act they activate together. Guys can actually leave the unit and it's kind of interesting because I was looking at that and I was like, I think you can daisy chain the same model around based on how unit activations work, but that was just me gaming the system. Anyway, uh, moving on, so that's that. Command counters, these are desecration markers. Standard markers, those are for special scenarios. Uh, tactical markers, again, that's like the command points or activation points, whatever you want to call them, uh, to keep track of that. We've got the barricades, construction, uh, obstruction phase, so you see that there, uh, how the dice work, hit again, crit, and then shield, apothecary symbol there, so yeah. Pretty simple there. General principles, these are real basic rules, uh, how everything works, activating. They also have a really nice round overview here, which is pretty simple. Uh, initiative phase, you roll off. Uh, at the start of the game, somebody has the initiative. Every other turn after that, you're basically rolling off to see who's gonna get initiative for the turn. Uh, it's three dice, whoever rolls the most hits. So player one rolls three dice, player two rolls three dice. Whoever has the most hits gets the initiative for the turn. Pretty simple. Uh, tie, you just keep rolling until you don't have a tie. Um, then you do ready plays, players uh, draw a command card, and all units receive two tactical points, command points, whatever you want to call them. Uh, action phase, players then uh, alternate activating units and making actions. Pretty simple. So, game phase, very, very simple. Uh, the, the action phase is when you do the moving, shooting, close combat, all that fun stuff, obviously. Uh, moving on from there. Goes over your basic actions, advance, units up to move, the unit activates, moves one adjacent unoccupied hex. Uh, if a hex is occupied by an enemy, you can't move into that hex. Uh, if a hex is occupied by a friendly model, you can join that unit. It's a consolidate thing here, which is one of the actions. Uh, you, if you're pinned, you can only move, uh, make advanced moves, consolidate, or assault actions. So uh, I don't believe you can attack shooting wise, other than assault. Uh, run, up to two hexes, you, that's how far you can go. Uh, each player, uh, let's see, yeah, unoccupied hex. You can't move to a rebel hex, oh, uh, that is, uh, or a hex that is adjacent to an enemy unit, the action ends immediately, so. Consolidate, so this is kind of weird. They have, have an example here, uh, unit A, unit B, unit C. There's two models, well, Unit A ends up with two models, it starts with one, but there's two models in unit B, three models total in unit B, one model goes to join unit A, the other two move to where now forming unit C. Uh, unit B activated, they started the, the turn with two tactical points, uh, they move to C, and the majority of them move that way, they have one, but when this guy joins unit A, unit A hasn't activated yet, so he has two uh, command points. So this now, this unit now has two guys. This is what I was talking about daisy chaining a unit. I think you can do that. Um, I may be reading into that rule a little bit too much, but I, I guess you're playing with such a small model count, really, that daisy chaining units is not going to be that big a deal. Uh, anyway, especially when you can only have three guys in a square. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, assaults pretty simple there. You just roll off for your your. Um, attacks, so uh, activated unit makes a melee attack against the target unit. If the uh, unit uh, that was the target is still contains at least one model after the attack has been resolved, it can immediately make a melee attack against the activated unit uh, without being activated itself. So close combat, back and forth. Notice it doesn't say anything about initiative or you know you have a power fish or swing at last, any of that stuff. It's just, it's just based off of pure activation. So. Uh, power fist swinging on a dude, or lightning claw swinging on a guy, a chain fist, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're active, you're activated, boom. So, and then retreat, how that works, falling back. Uh, keep moving here, there's the, this, let me zoom in on this, this was talking about again with the, uh, the line of sight stuff. If you look at the hex stuff here, how it's laid out, uh, this guy has, the green squares are where he can fire without being obscured, the yellow squares are where he can shoot where it is obscured, and then of course the gray squares he can't draw line of sight and fire to at all. So uh, that's again just a recap of that one. Um, then we go to obscured targets, how that all works. I'm not gonna read all the rules off. I mean, you should probably pick this up and read through the rules if you wanna play the actual board game because it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, how the resolve attacks works, I already mentioned most of that. Critical, critical effects, uh, basically if you roll one critical effect 
Again, it still counts as a hit, but uh, if the attack is successful and gets resolved, you can then resolve the critical effect on the attacking thing based on the weapon you're using. For example, uh, if you got a critical effect with a bolt gun or a bolt pistol, uh, the target loses one tactical point. So it's a nice way to pin stuff. Uh, same with uh, combi bolter. If you're not using the combi weapon part of the combi bolter, so like plasma, melta, uh, flamer, etc. So you have those different options, flamers, stuff like that. Uh, the plasma mechanics are actually kind of interesting. I was reading this one just to make sure I was doing this right. Uh, it's a shoot three attack, so you roll three dice base. The critical effect, if you roll a crit, add four dice to the attack roll. So you roll your first three, if you get a crit, you roll four additional dice separately from that pool. Uh, if these four dice roll at least two critical hits, the fire model is removed as a casualty after the attack is resolved. So uh, there's that... Uh, <laughs> plasma coming back to bite you in the butt. It's a really neat mechanic. Again, it, it's very similar to the way they work in the in the, the, the full version of the game, a uh, tabletop version of the game, because this is an actual game. Um, but it's it's neat. It's a neat way to, to quickly roll your dice. So same deal with plasma pistol. Missile launcher is an interesting thing. Uh, that critical is add one die to the attack roll for each model in the target unit. So if you're firing at three guys and you get a crit, you roll three more attack dice. Pretty cool. Um, melee weapons. Same deal. Lightning claws are pretty dirty. You have to uh, re-roll the dice. If you're in a pair, you have to re-roll four dice instead of just two. So pretty cool. A lot of these ignore the other guy's armor, shockingly enough. Uh, the chain fist actually counts your value for your stamina as one when you're allocating hits. So it, for the first target only, you just chop right through them. A lot of these are actually first target only. So the scenarios, how that works, playing the campaign, all that fun stuff. Here's what I was talking about for the, the board layout. You see here, it, it labels everything where all the where all the pieces go or where all the, the tiles go. So pretty straightforward. They give you, I think it was five or six scenarios to play from. Yeah, there you go. Six, that's the final scenario. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, I also like the fact that they included a nice large fluff section that goes over how the horse heresy started, the Great Crusade, what all that was. If you're again complete introduction to everything, leading right up to the Battle of Kalth, uh, Kalth, Kalth, Kolth, whatever you want to say. Uh, <laughs> Ultramarines uh, goes to talks about the Ultramarines chapter itself, uh, the Legion, I guess at this time, not really chapter. Uh, talks about Atheon and all his good goodness. The talks about their Primarchs. Uh, who those guys are, what they represented. Uh, they go over paint schemes, color schemes, all that fun stuff. Uh, different marking options, stuff like that. Really good fluff-wise, too. Then we get into the word bears as well. Uh, it talks about Logar. Um, Kurt has said his kind of backstory and everything like that. So it talks about how the word bears were a super re uh, religious fanatic. They worshiped the emperor as a god. The emperor was like, no, stop that. And like shamed Logar and Logar was like, no, and then <laughs> that whole backstory talks about Kurtha said being a chaplain uh, and how that affected him and how he was very angry about all that. Uh, talks about their livery and stuff like that. Good, good times, good stuff. Uh, color schemes again. Um, red and the black shoulder pads for the word bearers and the bull there. Then more stuff from Forge World, just kind of product placement, because you know, hey, why not? And then again, the reference sheet, which we've seen already. So that's pretty much it for this book. Really good stuff. This uh, this unboxing part's gone quite long just because there was a lot of little things I wanted to cover. So that's kind of why we wanted to break up all the videos just because I knew uh, I wanted to spend a lot of time on that. But that said, that's the last bit of our Horse Heresy Betrayal at Calf unboxing series. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like this series, you want to see more series type stuff, let us know. Uh, give us a like, subscribe. We really do appreciate those. This is Adam here from Bulls signing off, and back to a quick word from Big Red. Hey, Bulls fans, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that video. We got to uh, go over the rules. We got to go over the uh, board game accessories. It seems like a really, really interesting game. Uh, we have been just super excited to be giving all the coverage uh, that we have for Horse Heresy Battle for Cult. And uh, I hope you guys are even just a, almost as excited as we are, because this game is going to be crazy. Uh, Larry Bella here from Bowles. Thanks for watching, guys.